Um, when you were looking at these climbers that were coming in, was it a training gap that needed to be brought up? Oh, you need stronger fingers. Was it technique? You need to learn mm -hmm. how to get your hips different or flag or these kinds of things. Uh, you know, what, what were, if there were any common themes, you know, what do you see when it comes to trying to level up as a boulderer, um, especially yeah. in those kind of maybe V0 to V5 grades? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, most of them had the strength they needed, but I think the main thing was confidence. They didn't feel confident enough. They thought they weren't strong enough. Like a lot of, or yeah, a lot of the people in the course, they tried the hardest grade they had ever tried, and they actually did it in the course huh. when we like filmed for the course. And they hadn't even tried that grade before. You know, that's how. Like, <laughs> I mean. So just like the confidence part, I think that's like probably the most important thing. Wow. They they feel like they shouldn't, like they feel like they're not strong enough and they also feel like they shouldn't try something that is too hard for them. Like if they need a lot of attempts, so they don't really know. And also how muscle memory works. You know, if you, like you know this, when you project a route, it feels impossible the first time. And then if you just try it a bunch of times and you come back, it will feel, eventually it will feel easy. Um, and I think when you come in as a beginner, you're just like, you try a bowler and, oh, no, I can't do this bowler. And then you move on to the next bowler. And no, I can't do this bowler. And then mm -hmm. so on. But instead, trying to break down each bowler into sections and work on the different parts and then get tired on the different moves and take a rest day, come back and feel how the body will just adapt to the moves. Um, I think that's something... It's not unique about climbing, uh, but in other sports, other sports are more repetitive. You know, you have one movement, but in climbing, there's always something new. So when you try a new move, it's essentially like, is you doing that move for the very first time? And so it's, um, if you haven't discovered like how muscle memory works, I think it's, uh, it's going to blow your mind. God, I can really relate to this Magnus because for whatever reason, I'll, I'll work a project outside at the red for months, you know, and, and mm. I don't know, cause I'm on rock and I'm on a rope. It just kind of feels different, but I'll go into the gym and I'll get on a V4, you know, set problem at my gym. And like, if I don't send it in the first couple of tries, I'm like, well, that's too hard <laughs> for me or my fingers aren't strong enough. And I think one of the things climbers often default to is I'm not strong enough for this thing. Mm -hmm. And what an interesting observation that you were able to make in working with these beginner and intermediate climbers where you're saying by and large, they were all strong enough. It wasn't strength, wasn't the limiting factor. No. And if it was, it would have been finger strength. And I think that's another thing. A lot of people will avoid like, um, uh, hang boards and stuff, the beast maker. Um, but I do think that you can start doing the beast maker earlier than you think you mm -hmm. just have to increase the hang time. So no, you know, in my videos, I usually talk about, like I do three second hangs or five second hangs on something really small. But when you're starting out, you should hang somewhere where you can hang for like 20 seconds and then you gradually go down. And it's actually a safer way of it improving finger strength, building up that finger strength than to try a hard dead point move on some sketchy bowler. I mean, that's usually how people get injured. Um, so you can really control it on a fingerboard. So that's also something that surprised a lot of the people we had in the course, uh, how early you can actually start with uh, training on a fingerboard. All right, y'all, just a quick minute here to talk about every climber's favorite topic, finger strength and how we can build it. And I'm telling you guys, this has changed the game for me. Check out the force board. I've been using it for a while now and I am already seeing the difference in my finger endurance and finger strength. And that's because it's allowing me to precisely dial in what I need in any given workout. I mean, it's tiny, so I can throw it in my bag and take it to the crag for my warm up or to the gym or when I'm traveling. It logs everything in the app automatically. I can even see how I stack up against the community with regard to my finger strength. It's gamifying the way I'm training. Dr. Tyler Nelson's been on the show to talk about how effective this kind of training is, and I am loving it. If you're a geek about training your fingers like I am, you gotta check out the force board. It's cheaper than a pair of climbing shoes and it's gonna level up how you train your fingers. Also, if you use that link below and use code STRUGGLE at checkout, you get 10% off and the show gets a little bit of love. So get out there, get those strong fingies and start sending. 
That's great advice. I really appreciate that. You know, one other thing that you mentioned about about those climbers, and I've seen you talk about this for yourself as well, mm. is the the impact, the boost that one gets when they're being watched or being filmed. And you've talked yeah. about how sometimes, you know, you can't do a boulder and the camera turns on and and all of a sudden you're sending it. I'm curious yeah. about that effect. Yeah, no, it's strange. I mean, uh, for me too, like uh, I try a boulder many times and then, okay, I'm going to film this boulder later. And then when I come back to film it, I do it easily. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm always so surprised, but now I kind of know how that works. So now I'm not so surprised anymore, but in the beginning, that's, it's, uh, and I feel like that is also part of the reason why I still get stronger is because now I film a lot uh, in the gym. So I try harder than I used to, because um, you always try harder when there's a camera rolling. And I think that's an advi advice for people to, f to film themselves, um, to see also how they look like, because it's, it's really hard to tell how you look like uh, without filming yourself. Yeah, there's this video that you did. I think it was actually the um, from 8A plus to 6C video where there was a set problem. It was these big orange volumes and you had to do mm. these, like there's a crazy like downward dyno and all of this. And, mm. and you sent it and it looked really, really hard, but you were surprised that it went down and, and that it went down as quickly as it did. Yeah. And, you know, was that the camera being on or was it that you had tried it a few times and there's some muscle memory? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of both. Um, uh, and obviously I rested so to make sure that I would have a fair chance of doing it. Um, but I, I do think it's a combination of a lot of things. But that bowler, like even the first moves, I could hardly, I, I don't think I did it the first session I tried them. So I felt like, oh, this is impossible. And then I just came back, tried it many, many times. And then I felt strong enough to film and then, yeah it went easily and then people don't really get to see the struggle which i always try to include the struggle but for some reason when i film for my videos it's um it just makes it so much easier <laughs> yeah you need the so, filming the pre-filming yeah. before the filming you need to film all the stages so we can get that struggle exactly. we love struggle over here well th yeah. that brings up maybe one last question in, in this chapter here and that's this concept of climbing with people who are stronger climbers than you Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you say to that when you're talking to people who are um, looking to progress in the grades? Yeah, I think that's the most most important thing is to to climb with someone who's stronger than yourself. That's the quickest way of improving. But it's also, it kind of makes you a douchebag when you have to change friends every month, you know? <laughs> um, so <laughs> you should probably be a little bit careful with that. Hey, if you really like this conversation here with Magnus, what a good guy. I talked with him for almost two hours on the podcast where he shared all sorts of training tips and tricks and also a bunch of stories that I never heard before. Some crazy ones, in fact. And it's all right there on the podcast for zero cost. So check it out.